I call it the surfer mode. So entrepreneurship is a little like that. You have to be on the surfboard. You've got to wear your wetsuit on. The moment you see that that big wave, you got to go for it. You know, high, I think 100 meters up in the air here. Uh, this is this is quite the experience. And uh, think local, we act global. Yeah. Today's podcast is all about talking to inspirational entrepreneurs like Vijay, who have taken companies global, who have created employment opportunities for many, and is embracing technology and creating products, services, and businesses that are impacting the global business. environment. I have Vijay Thomas, the CEO and founder of Tangentia Ventures, has been in the profit 500 list of most profitable Canadian companies 6 years in a row. That has invested in one of Canada's largest apparel making company, the Clean Planet, Pumpkin Cart, and also India's leading dog food company, Dog Pod. Vijay is the president of Thai Toronto and we hand with him on our podcast. Vijay, welcome to our podcast. Here at the Prana How to Thank you for being a part of this podcast. Thank you. Thank you very much, Floyd. Thanks. It's a pleasure to be uh, here. A pleasure to be in Goa first, and and then secondly, you know, high. I think 100 meters up in the air here. Uh, this is this is quite the experience. And and uh, full disclosure, I do have a little fear of heights, but uh, this being strapped on, and I made sure it's strapped on tight. So um, I am uh, feeling better. I'm feeling good. And thank you again. Thanks for Vijay. You've here. been there in the business for 20 years. Each year you've touched new heights. Like right now, we are <laughs> on top of the world. right you've been doing multiple businesses and your core focus being tangential yes. technology yes right so my first question to you vijay is how to build a technological company that's boutique in nature yet global mhm so i think it's a it's a good question and as time goes by i ask myself this question if i were to if i were to do tangential again would i do it the same way and um, uh, the answer is probably not Uh, so my entrepreneurial background uh, you know i i was more uh, i call my style of entrepreneurship uh, the nike style of entrepreneurship which is just do it okay so so with with the nike style of entrepreneurship it's not really as well thought of on hindsight i think maybe i should have but it was it was more passion and and seeing a direction of where we wanted to go and and jump in and and figuring it out as you go along so um, it's been 20 years uh people in silicon valley sometimes think of uh, you know if if you if you run a company for 20 years and not actually exited or you've not uh, you know gone ipo you've done something you're a failure right so you know, i sometimes think is that uh, would you would i consider myself a failure and and, and sometimes um sometimes that if you look at it from a certain lens it is but you know we've been able to create a company that's really global uh, we call ourselves a multinational uh, we're a we're a you know mid size small to mid size multinational company uh, we have zero external funding uh, we've entirely bootstrapped uh, so you know there's there's a lot of pluses to what we are doing right now we can do what we want to do there's no there's no we're not answerable to any shareholders we're not answerable to any other things but i think this is a thing that um, you know keeps me awake at night sometimes what if we had done that what if we gone down that path could we have reached somewhere else now um you know but there's no regrets in what we've done and i think most people there are multiple schools of thought to entrepreneurship uh, there is the silicon valley school of thought which a lot of indian startups are embracing and, and when uh, money is a plenty uh, you know that's a good school of thought that's a good way to do your business on which i built tangentia which is you know long term disciplined uh, you know investment and and being agile as you go along uh, i think will 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 come up and and i think uh, there's lots of like indian uh, entrepreneurs uh, by nature are very agile disciplined and thinking long term but i think the money that came in changed some of it uh, but i i'm i'm actually quite uh, happy to see that people are going back to brass tacks and and uh, and i think i think it will be good now if you if you run a company that's fundamentally right and profitable raising money will will just help it but if you need to raise money to pay payroll and to to for basic expenses then there's a problem vijay we spoke about the fundamentals of business mm-hmm. right you have offices in the us canada india mexico mm-hmm. you work with business owners ceos of companies across these four regions yes as an entrepreneur fundamentals in india versus fundamentals in Uh, what's essential in us versus canada are completely different right so what is your advice on how to build a fundamentally strong company keeping a global worldwide view mm-hmm. so i think we call ourselves uh, you know a global boutique 
it's almost an oxymoron. How can you be global and boutique at the same time? Because yes. a lot of boutique companies are are local. Uh, they have a, a specific, uh, you know, understanding of a, a market, and they do things very bespoke in that market. But uh, by definition, since we're global boutique, um, you know, we we had to create a global delivery model, um, and and um, for mid-sized companies, not just for large uh, enterprises, like the large global software integrators, the GSIs, have been able to do this for very large projects, Tata Consulting Services, Wipro, Infosys, Accenture. Uh, they, but they don't touch projects below, I would say, five million dollars or anything below that. So, so we are able to do those size of projects. You know, we can do projects at half a million dollar size with a global delivery model. So, how did we go about doing it? One was we 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 started thinking, building a, a governance model, uh, project managers, uh, you know, that are local, you know, business analysts that are local, that understand local businesses. Uh, so we have people in each of these geographies that that also are part of the project. That, that can speak the language. And the language is not just, people talk about uh, fluency in, in language, like in English. Uh, I think it, language fluency, we're, we're talking more about cultural fluency as well. So not just language fluency. Uh, language fluency is easy. You know, you can you can be in India and, and know English and, and think you can speak to a person in the US or in Canada and, and they can understand each other and, and they can feel each other. Uh, but I think it goes beyond that. So the cultural fluency is important. And uh, what we've been able, what we've been trying to do, and I think we've succeeded in most part, is to create um, local companies in all these geographies. So in India, we're an Indian company. In Canada, we're a Canadian company. In the US, we're an, uh, in an American company. In, in, in Mexico, we're a Mexican company. So, so that is with, with a tie-in of all these things that work together, but we essentially we are local. So that is the only way to succeed in today's world, uh, is to you know uh, think local, we act global. Yeah, so that's what we do. We think local though. We definitely think, yeah. Or, or vice versa, you can think it both ways. Yeah. Vijay, one question. I think that I think a lot of mm. tech entrepreneurs will be asked today. With AI coming into the picture, how do we build tech companies mm -hmm. with AI at the forefront of our growth? Absolutely, I think AI um, is is going to be the future. I mean, I mean, um, the quicker everybody embraces AI, better it is. So either if you're a, uh, you're a consumer of technology, you know, or a, you, if you consume technology or you provide technology solutions, in both of this, AI is going to be a must. So if you are in the market to buy an ERP solution, you're in the market to buy, um, you know, a supply chain solution. If if it doesn't have AI today. Um, you're you're buying something that's going to be obsolete very soon. Um, so if you're buying, if somebody, so so philosophically uh, aligning yourself um, with the uh, the businesses as well. So as a company, we've we've worked very uh, we work with multiple um, uh, you know customers, and sometimes we have customers who tell us they don't want AI. Uh, they they don't believe in it. So I've told our sales team, um, you know, uh, we'll give them what they want, but don't even try uh, to to convince them. I mean, we, we they will see the writing on the wall at some point, and they will come. So as long as we keep telling them we're doing this, and and here we're available, but don't try to you know f you know push them or force them or do anything. I mean, it will it people will move and they will change. So but there is early adopters, there are people out there, I think, so early adopters of uh, in terms of consumption and early adopters in terms of production, I think should get together, work together closely. So these are early adopters. Uh, we need more pilots, we need more, um, you know, success stories. Um, and I think once that happens, uh, the laggards or people who are, you know, little more, uh, uh, you know, more, they, re they require more convincing are going to follow as well. So I think uh, it is it is time for people who are leaders uh, to step forward and, and if you're listening to this podcast and you're a company that consumes technology, uh, you produce something, you know, it could be you make cars, buses, uh, you know, uh, furniture, bread, you know, there is technology that can be put to use, uh, generative AI, AI, um, huge use cases in, in, in every sector and uh, every aspect of the business. Going a step further, we spoke about AI. Yeah. The future is autonomous, mm -hmm. as we say, right? Tangentia, you yourself has have embraced building autonomous enterprises. Mm -hmm. To a layman, why should enterprises go autonomous? It's a very good question. So, uh, you know, what we do at Tangentia, you know, we wanted to have a, a north star, a, a guiding 
guiding star for us. So the guiding star for Tangentia is autonomous enterprise. So what does autonomous enterprise mean? I mean, to the talk about automated enterprise. Automated enterprise is automating mundane, repetitive human tasks, and, and we make that, um, you know, we, we automate that. But in most cases, it's not very intelligent. It is, it is just doing, you're taking the human out and getting uh, a software program or a, a bot uh, to, to do that uh, work. Now, we take that a level further. Today, in, in an automated enterprise, let's say, uh, let's say it's a bank and you have a, a mortgage application that comes in. The, the mortgage application can be processed by the bot, but the final approval uh, is done by a human. human. But the person that approves has probably only been in the bank for three months. And somebody's taught them that these are the rules to follow and you, you, you do that and you, you uh, approve the, the mortgage. What if we actually taught an AI model to look at all the approvals and all the people of that same demography that came and applied over the last 20 years and take a better decision, a more richer decision, um, so the, the bank could possibly not have the human and also have a better decision making. So that is, we are going towards autonomous. The, the business runs on itself and uh, you, you need humans to only, you know, oversee and govern the autonomous enterprise. So, but, but actual decision making as well as tasks are done automatically and, and autonomously. Beautiful. We spoke about AI, we spoke about autonomous. Now going back to grassroots, Vijay, you are the president of Tai Toronto. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have yourself invested in around four or five startups or four or five uh, businesses. How to start and scale businesses? Because you worked with multiple businesses. You work with candidates uh, the 20 year old businesses. You work with businesses that have been for very su extremely successful due to COVID. So what is your secret formula on building a successful business? So I think the, the secret is to being agile, is, is to be ready to move between modes, right? Uh, so people talk about, uh, you know, fight and flight mode, right? So some people, uh, we fight and sometimes we fly, flight, right? So if, once we see danger or whatever. But I think as an entrepreneur, you need to have many more modes. Uh, you need to have a survival mode, okay? So a survival mode is uh, once you get in there, you need to be able to make sure that you survive, the business survives, which is a key mode and, and, and the key here is not survive. Uh, people sometimes take the survive mode to uh, uh, where you know you survive by throwing money at it or, or, or actually digging a deeper hole uh, and you know so survive would mean do things that, that actually pay you money, maybe a little off from your core intent, but make sure that you're getting money. Okay, make sure you're, 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 you, you have fire to, you know, wood to, you know, to put into the fire, right? So, so it's key to, to have that provider mindset when you're in that survival mode. Uh, the other one is, I call it the surfer mode. Okay, the surfer mode is, if you've looked at, uh, there's not many surfers here. This is like a, it's a little bit inland, so I think there's not much surfers. But if you go to, uh, further north from here, you go to Anjuna, Wagata, you see some surfers. Now, surfers are always in the water. Uh, and they're always wearing the wetsuit. Right. Uh, they are uh, on their surfboard waiting for the wave. Okay, so you don't see the wave and then jump into the water. Okay, because if you see a big one coming, you have to be ready. So, so entrepreneurship is a little like that. You need to be in maybe in survival mode, but ready. You have to be on the surfboard. You've got to wear your wetsuit on. And the moment you see that that big wave. You got to go for it. Now, at that time, you can't be thinking and doing whatever. So as an entrepreneur, you need to have all these modes in you. And, and the moment you see that, you jump at it, right? So uh, I think that is what I think has been my success, uh, you know, till today. And um, also in wherever we have invested and, um, you know, not done not so well, I've, I figured out the entrepreneur, uh, uh, the CEO probably missed some of these modes because you need to, you need to be able to, you know, very quickly change modes and, and do things. And, and I think there is also um, the, the how to scale. I think that's a whole different ball game. Is, 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 is once you've gone beyond that wave, now how do you make sure that you really, you know, uh, you know, go for it? And, and it's a lot of that is strategy, making sure your, your product offering is, 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 is really precise. You understand your market very well. It can't be, let's, let's just try this out. Um, so for, for, to scale, now again, it depends on what do you want to do? If you want to scale, you need to also get more resources. You'll need to dilute yourself. So, so all of those th models, uh, you know, once you understand all of those things, and if you want to go for that, it is. But again, I tell entrepreneurs today, everybody's an entrepreneur. Not everybody needs to become Flipkart. 
Okay. Yeah. So if you, uh, you know, uh, are the, you know, uh, very uh, niche e-commerce company in just the state of Goa, and you have something that appeals to to Goan people to buy from you, guess what? You need to just do that well. You don't need to become the next Flipkart. So, so, the, so there is, I think, also how you you need to probably define yourself and make sure your customers love you. Like it is not they like you alone, or they should love you. I mean, and if they love you, you'll do well. Like you know, people still go, um, you know, buy stuff from Tiffany's or whatever. You can buy diamonds on Amazon as well. But you go to Tiffany's, you you can go. Uh, why do people go to Fab India? There is a story. There is something that goes beyond. It's branding, I guess. You know that more than I do. But if you put, uh, uh, you know, somebody else put the same apparel that Fab India sells on Amazon, it probably won't do as well. Absolutely. We spoke about riding a wave, Vijay. Yeah. Right. So they say a good product. And a good wave makes for a great, mm -hmm. uh, a great business, right? So, but a good product and a bad uh, wave makes for a bad business. Mm -hmm. What was your big wave, right? What that propel tangential and how should how can we spot these waves? How to spot uh, trends, waves? Uh, because that's ninety five percent of the business is the wave. Right? Yes, yes. So there is there is a lot of waves. I think overall globally uh, today, you know, the AI wave or you know, uh, people call the, these as you know very compelling. You know, uh, like a ground well like this is some of them are beyond waves it's a huge things like you know uh, one is um, digitalization right uh, globally digitalization is a big wave it's going to happen or not okay. it is it is going to happen you know ESG okay the environment uh, you know uh, uh, climate change that's a big wave right so if you want to ride that wave you've got to go all in I mean it is it is happening uh, uh, globally there's a lot of uh, you know there's a groundswell in in favor of that so if you come up with any business that's in the sustainability uh, space you will do well AI which is again I call it under the digitalization there's another space which is the you know the consumption of the middle class now if you can come up with something that you can satiate the the, the needs of the middle class globally right you're king as well so if you can do that so these are you know fairly big you had one wave right during COVID uh, you yes. invested in a yes yeah. now those were those were probably not as uh, and not such as large groundswell, but uh, we we invest in a company. You know, believe it or not, we invested in a laundry business. Okay, the laundry business, um, and then there's there's a story behind why I invested in it, and, and it was little. Some of it was not not strategy, but I, I kind of got forced into investing in it. But the laundry business, not many people know of this. They also do darning and they they they, they fix clothes, right? They 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 repair clothes. The laundry business also repairs clothes. So so. When, when COVID hit, somebody went to this laundry and said, can you make masks, cloth masks? And they said, yes. And then I got involved with them and I said, if you can make masks, you can probably make gowns as well. So, and then we found out who, who needs gowns and, and we, you know, one thing led to another. We found um, people wanting gowns. Uh, we found, uh, you know, the government of Canada needed gowns. And, um, you know, we, we went and got a big factory, 35,000 square feet factory. Um, we were employing 250 people. And uh, within one year, uh, we became the largest manufacturer of isolation hospital gowns in Canada. So we went from, you know, zero to $10 million in revenue in, in one year. And, wow. and uh, it's great. I mean, it was, our bank said we started as a SMB small business and they said this is the fastest anybody has made it from SMB to corporate in, in one year. Um, now, uh, the, the, now, that's the, a story, right? The, so it that's is, it's a story. Now, it is a good story, but, but again, it was not a groundswell. Okay, so, um, and, and full disclosure, the company had to, we had to, you know, uh, sh shut down because guess what? There is no COVID anymore. We tried to pivot, uh, and this, is, this was a very big learning. This is something that I want to let people know as well. Until that happened, I had uh, only seen success. I had only seen success. I had only seen in everything you did, succeeded right and it was good i kind of feel uh, you're infallible uh, you know uh, you can do anything uh, but once this happened um, you know we fell flat on our face we tried you know pivoting to doing make in canada fashion uh, we started making some some t-shirts for drake uh, ovio which is his brand uh, so we got some good customers but we didn't get enough 
to feed the fire. I mean, the, 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 we had a too big a factory, uh, you know, rents went up almost double because Amazon was buying all factory and uh, warehouse space. So lots of, you know, headwinds happened all at once. And um, we had to we had to shut down and, and it was not a very... Um, uh, from extreme success. Uh, yes. Yeah, but again, on, on hindsight, when that happened, I was like, man, this is really bad. And because the banks came after us, it was it was quite a bad place to be. But I think uh, now I look at back at that and say, uh, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking at it glass half full and, and I think it is. Uh, but I think entrepreneurs need to be open to failure. And that's something that we don't uh, teach ourselves. Uh, we don't teach ourselves even in school. Uh, what happens if you fail? How do you lift yourself well or how do you even embrace failure? I mean, it's not, uh, um, you know, and then I think it's a, it's a so thing. How to embrace failure? Good question. So that's uh, how do you embrace failure? I think, and, and I learned this the hard way as well. It's one is uh, to acknowledge that it could have happened, right? It was, it was definitely, it was not something that we could have we could have prevented. We always look back and say, what could we have done differently? But that's water under the bridge, and it's already done. Like um, I was at the I was at the cricket match in in, in Ahmedabad, right? So uh, half the stadium walked out uh, when we were at uh, India was uh, you know at around uh, Australia was around 200, right? So I was telling people, hey, it is a game. It could have gone both ways, and it uh, so it's, it's probably going the other way, uh, away from what we wanted to. But we've got to embrace that. We got to stay, and I, I convinced all the people that I went with to stay till the end. And and you know, I said, let's do this. I mean, you know, it is what it is. But we've got to embrace the the inevitable. And 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 I think sometimes it is um, because if not, you're going to force yourself to do things that that might not actually work out. I mean, and you know, uh, and when to throw in the towel is also important, right? So so there is, I think, uh, um, you know, we we kind of also get people to say just keep fighting right keep fighting forever right i mean it is not there is there is no shame in failure so people should should say hey we failed and we can go on to do something else but we fail and 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 and, and i think the bigger part here is um, at some point uh, you've got to get investors and partners who are who are also investing in you and this is really really important i want to say this out uh, uh, very clearly because there are people, uh, we, we, we sometimes invest in companies and we're taking risk capital. If we're taking equity, it's risk capital. So I've seen people that invest in equity and then ask for the money back. I'm like, hey, you've chosen the wrong, wrong investor. You should not get an investor that does, doesn't understand risk capital. So a lot of, uh, so sometimes people do friends and family rounds of, so friends and family I think is a very dangerous round because it's, they're actually giving you out of love. So you're almost indebted to them to give it back, to give it back because it doesn't it doesn't matter um, if you fail. Their the failure is not an option for them. So either you know then you either take it as debt or make sure it's tied in somehow other way. But um, I think uh, you know either you you got to make sure that you you got the right partners uh, on board because. I've seen this, and as an entrepreneur, you need to fight back, okay? And especially in India, it is, in India, and I say this because, uh, you know, we have a couple of startups invested in India. Some companies that we've, we've, we've bought out in India, uh, a company that we bought out in India uh, two years back, the, the founder of that company said, um, you know, I promised some people higher returns, and I asked him, is that debt or equity? He said, equity. And he says, I am now paying them money. I said, are you crazy? There is no, you, that's equity. There is no need for you to pay them, but he said, "But I promised them." So, so that was a mistake. Don't make promises that cannot be kept, or, or you know, in 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 equity, there's always the chance of uh, you know, uh, you know, super success, and there's chance of failure as well. But if it fails, everybody fails. Uh, all your equity investors fail. Now the debt guys can go back and get something, whatever, the part of the furniture, or whatever. But I think this is very key. Absolutely. So Vijay, you spoke about bringing the right partners, yes. bringing the right team in. You yourself have built a team of an army of uh, you know, very passionate uh, you know, employees at Tangentia. You also voted one of the best places to work in. So how to one is motivate your employees, and how do you get? Because in this ever in the today's tech world, talent is one of the biggest assets out there, right? And the most. So how do we one is ensure we get the right talent, motivate them, and build a culture that helps the business thrive. Mm -hmm. Very, very. I think this is this is something that keeps me awake at night as well, okay? So one is in Tangentia, we're a very fast-paced company. So we we also 
uh, are very entrepreneurial. We want our, our employees to be entrepreneurial. We want them to start thinking as entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs and have the owner mindset and, and figure out what do we do? What is the best way of approaching this? Uh, and how do we, you know, look at this as a business? And, and, and sometimes we fail. So, you know, and if we fail, uh, you know, just make sure we don't, uh, in, 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 sometimes we make mistakes as well. Okay, so making mistakes is okay, uh, but let's not make the mistake again. Okay, so, but, you know, if you make the same mistake again, then we're, we have a problem. So I think that's, I think, something that we've, we've uh, been able to inculcate in the company. And um, also celebrating success, you know, you know, sometimes celebrating failure as well and, and kind of making, you know, uh, making fun of ourselves, right? Hey, we screwed up. Right, it's, it's okay. Like, hey, you know, uh, uh, you know, you have a drink when you succeed. You have a drink when you fail as well. So you don't need to moan. Uh, and then the other thing we have a rule is uh, we have a 24-hour rule. So we, uh, you know, we, we we only celebrate success for 24 hours, uh, and and we also maybe moan failures for 24 hours. After that, it's back to work. Right, it's it's, it's back to the grind. I mean, we've got to continue doing this, but. Specifically, I think it's difficult. How often do you have to motivate employees? People have said, you know, my answer is every day, every day, every, day, every time. Okay, so it's every day, every time. And then, and then I kind of, um, you know, I think as, as CEO, my role is also chief uh, mentor, uh, chief uh, cheerleader, you know, you know, so I think it is a lot of those kind of things that uh, on a daily basis, but I think we've also hired the right people. You know, sometimes we, we also hire the wrong people. Okay, and, and then um, we've got to let go of people, which is also something I think as entrepreneurs, if you're saying this is how to, I would say, I have not done that very well, uh, but I, I think people should, is hire slow, fire fast. Okay, so oh. if you're gonna have a mantra or rule, that's one there, I mean, hire slow, fire fast. Okay, and this is something that I've been trying to, you know, l learn this myself. It takes some time. It's maybe a cultural thing as well, you know, and, and I've not, uh, I must confess, I've not been as good as this, but uh, trying to get better. Some great mantras, some great uh, nuggets of information mm -hmm. by Vijay. We just spoke about celebrating uh, wins, celebrating your failures. Very few entrepreneurs celebrate failures, right? That's why we've created a podcast like this, to celebrate entrepreneurs like Vijay, entrepreneurs, the real heroes of the economy heroes that have seen extreme success, have seen failures and celebrate all of it, right? So if you like what you're hearing, you like what you're listening, don't forget to follow, like, subscribe. Vijay, you've been a true hustler. Everyone knows Vijay. Vijay is the guy who will travel for uh, 24 hours, not sleep, go into a meeting, continue working, work the whole night again. So you've been doing the hustle for 20 years now with Tangent Chair. Right? How to motivate, you know, what's the advice you have for entrepreneurs to how to motivate themselves and keep yourself you know, at the hustle mode. Right? So 20 years hustle, how to? How to keep yourself motivated? One is I think you have to listen to your inner self. I try to read up on stuff, you know, do I know about uh, uh, Ikigai? Do I know about uh, work-life balance? Do I know all that stuff? Absolutely, I know that. But I've, I've kind of looked at it and said, yeah, I think everybody is going to find their own work-life balance, right? Work-life balance is not, uh, you know, I work nine to five, I shut off. And then after that is, is, is life, right? This is a, a very traditional view of work-life balance. And I think it's, it's, it's redundant. Uh, I think Narayana Murthy got a lot of flack for saying people have to work uh, 50 hours, I think. Now, I don't know what people say. I work 80 hours a week. Okay, so I work 80 hours a week. So give me you know, flack for that. I mean, but I think if you're passionate and, and you like doing what you're doing, it's not work. So I enjoy what I do. Um, you know, I'm enjoying what I'm doing right now. So. Uh, would, I, would I put this under work or play uh, or, or, or life, right? So, uh, you know, so I think I look at this more as a work-life continuum. It's, it's, a, it's a difficult concept to explain, but uh, I think, uh, and then thanks to my family as well, they've embraced this work-life continuum because we sometimes go on vacation and, and I'm taking calls, okay? But they understand as well that the vacation happens because, you know, I can, I can do this. Uh, otherwise, if I do the work-life balance, I would not be able to travel. Okay, I can do this. I can do this. Um, I can take a call from anywhere in the world. There is a picture of me. Uh, we were actually driving a boat on Lake Como, and I took a, a whole half an hour call on on Lake Como, and um, you know I, I got my son to hold the steering for some time. But but it is what it is. So but the fact that so I think this is work life balance, uh, not in the traditional sense, but the the fact that people. Uh, can do some of these things. Wow. So, we just redefined work-life balance to work-life continuum. I have one question for you. Mm -hmm. Tangentia has been 
uh, is known as a brand globally, right? Mm -hmm. Let me just read out a few of the awards that you have won because uh, it's it's quite a list. Automation Anywhere MVP, IBM Tech Data Partner of the Year, Digital Experience Winner, BFSI CTO Summit, CIO Review, 20 Most promising, uh, promising Retail Providers, Automation Anywhere, Excellence in Business Process Automation, Inc. 5000 List of Faster Growing Companies, Microsoft Top 4 Powerhouse Globally. This is a long list of brand recognitions that you have. In simple terms, step by step, how to build a powerful brand? Yeah, again, it you know it, it takes time. You you need to have success. Uh, one is you need to have done something good, and then you need to let people know that you've done something good. So the brand also need to have some kind of substance. Uh, okay, so you know there's a little bit of branding that you can do to to kind of say this is where we want to be. Okay, this is where we want to be, but but then you need to have you need to back that up. Back that up. Okay, so with quality so work. With quality work. So what I think we've been able to do is 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 kind of show the uh, the vision. We want to be the autonomous, the leading, uh, one of the leading autonomous enterprise uh, solutions company in the world. Okay, so we put that out there. We talk about it. We 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 let more people know of it, and uh, we're we're evangelizing that. But as we evangelize. We also said, hey, we've done this for this company. We've done this for the largest, uh, you know, uh, retailer in India. We've done this for the largest beverage alcohol company in the world. Uh, we've done this for the largest um, oil and gas company in Canada. Uh, so we've, as we say all these things, I think it, it gets people's uh, eyes open. Uh, we, we've, we've truly have built, uh, you know, uh, success stories or or I would say battle stories. Like I almost call them battle stories They're because there's a lot of scars from having done these things. It's not. It was not all. This was not all. Uh, you know, uh, roses around the way. So this is a lot of this were was really battles that we had to do to deliver things and ensure that things were done on time and on budget and and make sure the customers were, were happy. Having done all of that, I think we can actually say that we can do this and we can deliver. So I think that actually adds to the thing. And, and then I think once you got a couple of recognitions from uh, people like Microsoft and IBM and, and uh, Automation Anywhere and some of the other partners of ours, that, that kind of lends itself. So Neto and you know, at some point we're, we're uh, I know, I think we're still a long way off from being a, you know, a, as big a brand as we want to be. But I think we're, we're building, uh, at least in the in the right circles, people know of us. And I think um, it is it is still a long way off uh, to where we want to be. So, you know, we, we, we definitely want to, you know, make sure uh, we should be in automation. If somebody thinks automation, they should think, think tangentia. And we think autonomous. So how do we become as you know, ubiquitous in this business, like, uh, you know, Xerox is to photocopying, okay. uh, you know, that is, that is, I think, the holy grail. So, you know, uh, we're not there yet, but, you know, the, the intention, the direction is to, you know, align ourselves so strongly to this that we get there. So that's Vijay's vision for a brand. Have a strong mission, okay, get known uh, to be the autonomous player, uh, biggest autonomous player in the market and proof, have proof, right, because Vijay, through his projects have delivered commendable resu results in the autonomous space. And and last but not the least is, how can we craft a compelling roadmap to become ubiquitous within this industry? Right? So I think Vijay, before we sign off, I have one last question. You're the president of Tai Toronto. You run Tangentia Ventures, which uh, invest into uh, companies. How to find time to run so many businesses? Okay, uh, this is a good question, and my wife will 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 love you for having asked that question because uh, you know I actually do some more other things as well. I'm, I'm glad you. You, you can tell us about that. You, as well. you, didn't, you didn't bring those up, but um, I, I am uh, trying to cut short uh, uh, a couple of things that I do now. Uh, it's almost a curse uh, when I go to places and I look at something and I say you know what, this can be done better, right? So, so the what, what happens there is, the guy's like, okay, if you say you can do this better, you do it. So inevitably, if I get involved in something, within a year, they make me the president of that thing. So, <laughs> so, so it is it is a little bit of a curse, but it is, a, I enjoy doing it, but you know, I, I need to cut down a little bit uh, as well. There is a lot of balancing that needs to be done. Uh, and I think uh, at some point, uh, um, as I start getting involved in slightly bigger things, there is uh, the time commitments are a little higher, and and the the impact that you can make I think is is, is higher. But uh, I'm slowly looking at places where 
you know, I, I can make an impact, but can other people make an impact there as well? Okay, so if they can make an impact, then guess what? Hey, uh, you can, I can pass it, passing on the baton to somebody else that can do that. But there are some places which I think, uh, you know, because, you know, if, if it's global in nature, you know, I've, I've lived uh, in globally, I have that, I kind of boast a little bit, like the, the cultural fluency to, to operate in different markets is, I think, a very difficult skill that not many people have. People have the language fluency, but the cultural fluency to, to operate is a different thing. So I, I, I think there are organizations that I can add, uh, you know, have to and help them uh, in those kind of areas. I'm now picking and choosing the things that I can do. And yes, it was, it was uh, again, it, I enjoy doing all of them, uh, but keep saying uh, we, there's only 24 hours in a day if there's a way of doing that. But I think you'll have to cut short. I mean, so if anybody, watching you know especially when you're starting up uh, you might uh, not have time to do as many things so be be cognizant of that and and uh, only spread yourself as thin as you can but absolutely if you like what you're hearing you like what you're listening to do not forget to show us some love share subscribe hey entrepreneur how to with floyd thank you vijay for coming on the podcast vijay's philosophy is simple if you can make it better do it right true tangentia is making businesses better to technology through his investments, he's making uh, dog food better. He's making uh, a cleaner planet to his apparel company. He's making deliveries better in Canada. He's doing so many things that make it better. He's making Thai Toronto uh, a better place for businesses. So Vijay, thank you for making our podcast better. And I'm pretty sure everyone watching this has been inspired. And everyone watching would have taken some inspiration from Vijay on how to grow your business, right? Hustle is the name of the game. Thank you, Vijay, for being part of our podcast. My name is Floyd Tavares, co-founder of Branding Consulting, a brand consulting firm. Do subscribe and show some love. Thank you very much.